This scripture is very important. For the Son of Man, which is Jesus Christ, came to seek and to save that which was lost. And um, would you put the cross up here for me, would you, Noah? Put the cross right up there for me. He came to seek and to save that which is lost. When I was lost, I didn't even know I was lost. How many was in here and you, and you were lost and you didn't know it? Let me see your hands. Look at all the hands going up, all the hands. You're, you're lost. And the Lord seeked you out and found you and revealed to you by his Holy Spirit and by the Word of God that you were lost, separated from God. That's what being lost is. You're separated from God. Uh, the Bible says that the unbeliever has been uh, blinded by Satan from the glorious light of the gospel. There may be people here that don't believe in God. They don't believe their loss. They don't know their loss. Well, that's why I'm here, to tell you you're lost. That means you're separated from God. That's why you have no fellowship with God, because you're lost and you're separated from God, and you don't sense God. You don't feel God. You, you don't have any knowledge of God uh, you've been blinded by the enemy, and therefore, until God seeks you out and finds you and reveals to you that you're lost, you'll stay lost, okay? But I want you to see, the Son of Man came to seek, so the Holy Spirit is seeking you out. Even though you have no interest in God, you, you can't feel God, you can't see God, that's why Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. When you're born again by the Spirit of God and by the incorruptible seed of the Word of God, then you will say, God, there you are. He's invisible. You can't see him, but you know him who is invisible, and there's no doubt in your heart and no doubt in your mind, because the Bible says these things have been written that you might know that you have eternal life. And if you don't know you have eternal life, then you're lost. But you don't have to stay lost. You can give your life to Christ, and he'll come into your life and change your life. I think the closest thing that I can come to to describe people that, that have been blinded by Satan from the glorious light of the gospel is when I fell in love uh, with my wife uh, 61 years ago, I think it was 61 years ago. 61 years ago, you've been married to me. Been fun, ain't it, huh? Is it? 61 years ago, when I met Susan, boom! It's hard to explain. If, you've, if you have fallen in love, you know what I'm talking about. You want to be with that person. And uh, when I fell in love with Susan and she fell in love with me, she thought I was just the greatest thing on planet Earth. <laughs> Didn't you? <laughs> this way, not that way. Okay. <laughs> But you know, how many of you know what I'm talking about? There was a change. I wanted to be with her. I, you know, I woke up this morning with Susan on my mind. Well, when I got saved at 26 years old, Christ came into my, into my life by his spirit and changed my life. And I've had fellowship with him for, for almost 60 years now. Every day I have fellowship with someone I can't see, but he's as real to me as you are real to me. Okay, and we, we talk, we walk together, he shows me things, he strengthens me. Uh, gosh, it, almost 82 years old, the reason I'm here this morning, because I woke up this morning with Jesus on my mind, and I begin to quote scripture. The Lord is my strength, <laughs> blessed be the name of the Lord. And I've learned to draw from the Holy Spirit, okay? So, we want to remember... Christ came to seek out those that are lost and to save you if you're lost, okay? Now, some people say, well, I don't care. I want to stay lost. You will. You'll stay lost. 
until the Lord seeks you out. And you'll be surprised what he'll do. If you've been saved today, raise your hand if you've been saved. Let me see your hands have been saved. All right. All right. That's all right. You know, just be, be, be you know, we, if you're saved, you're saved. If you're lost, you're lost. But I want you to know that Christ came to save you and to seek you out. In fact, he's seeking you out right now, even though you're resisting in your mind and in your spirit, you're resisting what I'm saying. But let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is the hound from heaven, and he knows how to sniff you out. Because I was running from God as hard as I could. But I tell you what, that day when he got a hold of me, and found me, and I surrendered my life to him, my life began to change tremendously. Another scripture I want you to see is 1 Timothy 1, 15 and 16. Put that up on the board. Now these are things to remember, and I want those that are saved, if you find somebody that is lost, talk to them. I don't care what, if they say, well, I don't believe. Hogwash. That's just the devil speaking through them. Just show them by your life. Look what the scripture says. The saying is sure and true and worthy of full and universal acceptance. What saying? That Christ Jesus the Messiah came into the world to save Bob Tilton, of whom I am foremost. In other words, Paul is speaking there, and he's saying that Christ came into the world, the Messiah came into the world to save sinners. And Paul says, whom, by the way, I am the most worst sinner there is. And I've often read that scripture, and I say, well, I don't, wait a minute, Paul. I'm right next to you. But then on the other hand, the Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the good news is, yes, on this side of the cross, if you're lost, you don't understand what I'm talking about. you as blind as a bat. But that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. And all of a sudden, the light will turn on, and you will see by the Spirit of God you are lost. And that's when you'll come to Christ. And God put you in Christ, and of course Christ was crucified on the cross, and then you walk out on this side with resurrection life. You remember that song we sang at the very beginning? How many got into that song? Let me see your hand. Got in it, yeah. For those that couldn't get into it, if something's wrong. Yeah. Bob, you love it? Oh, I love you. That's why I'm telling you the truth. Because, see, it was spiritual. Yeah. See, man is spirit, soul, and body. And your spirit man is the part that's lost and separated from God. That's what death is. Death is separation. Death is separation. And when Adam sinned, it affected the whole human race. It affected this earth. It affected the animals. It affected nature when Adam fell. But the good news is Christ came to, say, to seek out that which is lost. And I thank God for that. Now, I want to share something about, about uh, the Bible talks about working out your salvation. You don't work for your salvation, but you work it out. God puts it into us, and we work it out. The Bible says we're saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. So turn, if you will, to Philippians 2. Philippians 2, 12. Philippians 2, 12. It's the New Testament. And let's read that. I may have to read it from my Bible, because that's sort of hard to see there. Therefore, my dear ones, as you have always obeyed, and he's talking to believers. Isn't that beautiful? You have always obeyed my suggestions. So now, not only the enthusiasm you would show in my presence, now Paul is talking, talking about his presence, but much more because I am absent, Paul is absent, work out or cultivate carry out to the goal 
and fully complete your own salvation with reverence and awe and trembling, self-distrust with serious caution, tenderness of conscience, watchfulness against temptations, timidly shrinking from whatever might offend God and discredit the name of Christ. So here we all of a sudden we jump right in. Well, I got to go to work, got to go to work. But the next verse, 13, look at verse 13. Not in your own strength. Everybody get that? Not in your own strength. Now I want to show you how to let the Holy Spirit do his work in you. Not in your own strength. For it is God who is all the while effectively at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. Very important that you understand that verse of Scripture. Because as you get connected with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says those that are led by the Holy Spirit are sons of God. And once you understand that the Holy Spirit lives within you, he will strengthen you to do God's will. It is God working in us, making us willing to do his good pleasure. Even after we are saved, God begins to do what we call a sanctifying work. The sanctifying work is the Holy Spirit working in us, energizing and creating in us the power and the desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. Now, the Bible talks about carnal Christians. If you've read your Bible, you know what about carnal Christians. Carnal Christians don't have a lot of, a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of them don't have a lot of interest in, in just doing God's will. You know, they come to church once in a while. They, they uh, might read the Bible once in a while. But they haven't really allowed God to do that work in them. Are you listening? Now, here's what I want to get across to you today. Putting your faith in God's Word. Here's what the Bible says. God watches over His Word to perform it. Jeremiah 1.12. Turn to Jeremiah 1.12. Now remember, if you are a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit in you, and He is working in you, and He will show you what is wrong and what is right. That's why you don't really need the law, because the, whole, the lawgiver lives within us, and He shows us what is wrong and what is right. If you're being led by Him, you will learn His voice, and you will learn His movements. You will learn and sense Him directing you and guiding you, in your senses, in the inner man, in the spirit man, okay? Now, then said the Lord to me, you have seen well, for I am alert and active, notice this, watching over my word to perform it. Everybody see that? I'll go to sleep, I want you to see that, because I'm heading somewhere here now. Let's read it again. Then says the Lord to me, you have seen well, for I am, al I am God's, God's alert. He's active. Where's he active at? Say he's active in me. He's active in me. Watching over my word to perform it. Well, as long as the word is on the pages, that it's not what he's talking about. You get the word inside of you. Now notice this, when you get the word inside of you, he watches over that word that is in you, and he will perform that work, that word in you, and cause you to be, instead of an old grouch, complaining, you just become a jolly good fellow. How many understand what I'm talking about? See, a lot of Christians today don't realize 
that the Holy Spirit lives in them and He is active. He's watching over the Word of God as we get the Word of God into us. He will, he will perform it. He'll say, for example, He says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Ain't a person in this place can do that on his own power. So we get the Word of God in us. Lord, you said for me to love my neighbor as I love myself. What is God going to do now? He's going to watch over that word, love your neighbor as you love yourself, and he's going to perform it in you. He's going to perform it in you. He's watching over his word to perform it in you, and you bear the fruit of it. You bear the fruit of it. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Very important you do, but you got to use faith. You know, we say, well, Lord, send your word to save so-and-so. That's good. God will watch over his word. But get the word in your own heart. That's why the devil will try to steal it out of your heart. Because if it gets in your heart, God, listen, God, I'm using this word for the lack of understanding the word I showed you. He's watching over his word to perform it. But you've got to get the word in you. How many in here takes blood pressure pills? All right. Keep it in the bottle. It ain't going to do you no good. Hello? Yeah. But you take that pill once a day and get it in you, and it does its work. Hello? The Bible says we've been born again by the incorruptible seed of the Word of God. Years ago, I used to plant a garden every year. I loved planting a garden every year. And I'd make sure I put the seeds down in the ground and cover them up and do all that's necessary and everything. But I tell you what, we used to have some crows around here. Them crows would come and eat that corn, steal that corn. Ain't nothing coming up. The devil will steal the word of God out of your heart, and there ain't nothing coming up but moaning and groaning sometimes, complaining, self-pity parties. Love me, Bob, I'm trying. So i tell you what you do. You take blood pressure pill, don't take it for two weeks. Today we're gathered here to pay our last respect to sister so-and-so because she didn't take her blood pressure pill. Explain that to me. How does it work? I don't know. Just get it in you. And it works. Just get the Word of God in you. Memorize the Scriptures. Get them in your heart. Susan's laying in the hospital. Got the tube up her nose. She, she couldn't read the Bible. People coming in left and right, you know, checking your blood pressure, checking this, checking that. You know, you can't get no sleep in the hospital. How many's ever got any sleep in the hospital? They wake you up to give you a sleeping pill. Ex explain that. Some of you don't know how to laugh, but, you know, you live long enough, you're going to see what, what I'm talking about. <laughs> God watches over his word to perform it. Where is his word? You care? You, uh, yeah, yeah. You better get it in there. Get the word of God in you it's active yeah. it's sharper than any two-edged sword yeah. and you get that word of god in you and you will be conformed into the word that you put into you listen you can see that in the natural what you watch on tv now bob you're meddling mm. Mm. Hate thy neighbor as you hate yourself. 
Why do you think people are going around shooting people? Huh? They got the love of God in their heart, ain't they? Huh? They ain't got no love in them. They don't even love themselves. You know, they're just mad. They're angry. See, when you're angry and you're mad and you're mad at yourself, you're going to take it out on somebody else. Did you know that? You know it now. I just told you. See, you're getting smart. That's right. When you're angry and you're mad, and the guy that you're mad at is big, so you find some little somebody little and take it out on them. Hello, are you out there? That's just the way it works. That's why God says, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I'll take care of it. I will take care of it. You'll mess it up if you try to take care of it. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So remember that. Now, I want you to turn, if you will, to Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13. Did I read, wait a minute, did I read that? Yeah. Did I read 13 on the board? You got Jeremiah one twelve there. Did you put Philippians two thirteen up there? Yep. You got Jeremiah one twelve. Philippians two thirteen. It's getting hot in here. Now, let's read that again. Did I read that? Did I read that? I get so caught up in my message, sometimes I forget what I read. All right, let's read that again. Not in your own strength. So you must put your, fo uh, uh, your, <laughs> your foot, that's a good one. You must put your faith in what God says. God says, I will watch over my word to perform it. So you get the word of God in you and you rely upon him to accomplish what the word says. How many understand what I'm talking about? But you just can't throw the corn in the ground and then, and, and head out of town. You got to water it. You got to cultivate it. You got to protect it from the enemy. And even when the corn comes up, oh, look at that nice ear of corn. And the more you're going to pluck it. And during the night, this deer comes out of the woods and eats your corn. How many's ever had that? <laughs> And you come back out there, oh, why didn't I protect it? The deer ate my corn. So we have to protect the word, but we have to put faith in God that he is watching over his word that we've put into our heart. You, you, you can, we could go through the, the uh, Matthew 13, the sowing of the seed. Have you remember the parable of the sowing of the seed? Sow it on different soil, different parts of people's hearts. Remember that? In fact, let's turn there real quick, like, and uh, I got to read that again. Look at, look at that. Boy, that. Not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while effectively at work in you. Now put your faith in that. Energizing and creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. This is what we talk about changing us from the inside out. Changing us from the inside out. So what do you do? You're laying in bed, you're sitting in the chair, you're driving down the road, Father, I thank you, you're watching over your word that I planted in your garden. How many of you know we are God's garden? You know the scriptures, you know what I'm talking about. We are God's garden. And he expects us to plant the seed, which is his word, into his garden where he can watch over it and perform it and make it come about in your life. I don't get one amen in this place. Just a little teeny amen. We need teeny little amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is revelation knowledge, children. 
We're always putting faith in oh, God. God's going to do this external thing. God's going to do that external thing. Change my neighbor. Change my husband. Change my wife. No. God changed me inwardly, and you begin to see things differently. I see people today, they got it made, and they think they don't have it made. I want to send them to Syria over there and <coughs> let them get blowed up a couple of times. 200,000 people. How many read about the 13 little teenage kids were watching TV, hockey on TV, and the ISIS found out they were watching it on TV and they killed all 13 of the kids? You better count your blessings one by one or we'll take a collection up and send you away. <laughs> Everybody say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Folks, let me tell you something. If you just feel good, you're blessed. Come on now, don't shout me down. If you just feel good, you're blessed. If you're not hurting this morning, you're blessed. If you don't have a tube up your nose, you're blessed. If you don't have a tube up your... Uh, uh, other nose, you're blessed. Say, I'm blessed. You might not hair on you got any hair on your head, but you're blessed. You can talk. You can think about that dinner you're going to eat after we leave here. You're blessed by God Almighty. God came down here to seek you out and to find you and to listen to this and to give you eternal life. Eternal life. What other religion do you know that will give you eternal life? <coughs> the minute you your body quits breathing, your spirit leaves this body, and you're present with the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8. Brother, that is a tremendous salvation that God has provided. I don't know why people are so... Yes, I know why, because the devil has blinded them from the glorious light of the gospel. The Holy Spirit has been given to us as a guarantee that He will give us that new glorified body. Now, some of you young guys and young women in here, and uh, you know, hipping and a hopping and a hooping, but one of these days you're going to get older and you ain't going to be able to hippy hoppy hopey. You're going to say, Well, what did Pastor Bob say about that new glorified body? You're going to appreciate that new glorified body. No more acid flux. <laughs> Love it. What other religion? There is none. What other religion that God will come into their, into their being and, 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 and challenges his children? Get the word in you. That's what I am watching. That's what I want to perform. I want to perform what you put into yourself. That word of God into you. I will perform it. I will strengthen you. I will bring you forth. You will be able to reign and rule in my power. I will do it, saith the Lord. Some folks, I mean, if you live long as I have, you, for the first 20 years, I tried to live the Christian life, and God says, give up. I says, I do, I give up. He says, now let me live it in you and through you. Let me tell you the secret. I know I don't have to yell. Am I yelling? Okay. Am I yelling? Good. Noah, boy, you got it, son. Have you ever dared him? Wherever you go, God says, I'll never leave you.
Even when you are bad, God's right there. And he's saying, you know, you can do that if you want to. But let me show you what the result of you doing that. Let me show you the consequence of, of doing that. And you stop and you listen. How many has ever touched a hot stove? How many touches a hot stove now? You got a toughie there. You got some matches, let's check him out. God will direct you and, and guide you. I never, I never, I remember when I was 20 years old, I never was looking for a wife. Was you, Charles? No. And she dropped right out of heaven, didn't she? It happens to some of us. <laughs> I just wasn't looking, you know. I mean, I mean, we, I won't go into that. Susan don't like me to talk about some things. Uh, but when I met my wife, <laughs> these bells begin to go off. I said, what are you doing tonight, honey? <laughs> well, I got to work till 8 o'clock. Well, could I take you home? She said, sure. I reckon it'd be all right, since I know you so well. First time she ever met me. But she knew me because my ex-supervisor told her about this handsome guy <laughs> with a lot of hair on the head and he was a super super duper and so my 1941 plymouth two-door with skirts on it pulled up there to the western union she got i jumped out of that car opened that door she got in i shut that door went around the other side got in put that thing in gear and go golf we've been together ever since Oh, I mean, it's honeymoon every night. Woo every morning, it's honeymoon. My coffee is ready for me. My biscuits or my waffles and, and bananas. We have bananas for breakfast, you know. Just there it is, right there. It's time to go to church. My, my clothes are laid out on the bed, right there. Ironed, polished. Honeymoon all the time. And she's just so blessed to have me sitting in the chair. You know, <clears throat> we got a chair over there. It goes back, and I got a chair over here. And we sit, and we look at one another, and, and we got, you know, coughing and a spitting, and we got our spitting bu bucket there. I spit in mine, she spits in hers. Look at Susie, she's about to fall, get crawling under the chair. I can spit further than you. <laughs> so we put our spit things out there. And we say, let's see. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and whoever wins fixes breakfast for the other. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to talk. Just be together. It's exciting. You see, that's the way it is with God. Yeah. Don't always have to talk. Just being with God. God being with me. See, the natural mind of people, they don't understand that, but there's a real relationship. See, the whole thing with Christianity is not religion. It is fellowship. It is relationship. Marriage is that way. Marriage is to be an example of, of relationship and fellowship with one another, with God and with man. And that's what we're to demonstrate in our marriage. Oh, 
oh, if I could just screw your head off. And I know some of you know what I'm talking about because you have that type of relationship with God. Remember now, this tape goes out into the world. And they're going to say, what in the world is that bald-headed guy talking about? Talking about me, not you. <laughs> Relationship. How many in here really has relationship with anybody raise your hand all right there's a few in here that's good man you know what i'm talking about for those that couldn't raise your hand what's the problem it may be on their part i don't know my daughter's come over relationship I got three wonderful daughters relationship dad you doing okay I'm sitting in my chair you doing okay dad yeah mm -hmm. you know I love you thank you I love you too <laughs> can I massage you back yeah it is you right back there This is what people are starving for in the church. Scared to get close to anybody because you might just find out that I got something in my life that would cause you to reject me. But here's the thing about it. When we get the Word of God into every one of us, and God does that work in every one of us. You're talking about a fellowship. You're talking about a relationship with one another. It just happens by the Spirit of God. How many in here have I lost? Have I lost anybody? Well, don't you, you understand what? And this is what people are craving for. I was thinking the other day, it was raining outside. Susan me was in the house, a spitting and a hawking. <laughs> we'll burn this DVD. <laughs> raining outside. We're just in there in that little nest in our home. God was there. And we just breathing in his presence. I'd look at her and blink my little eyes. <laughs> She'd look at me and blink her little eyes. <laughs> that signal's going out, you know. <laughs> See, some of you think I'm crazy. That's all right. We're enjoying it, aren't we, baby? And then we do something real exciting. I said, let's sit on the couch where we can hold each other's hands. She says, oh, giddy, 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 let's do that. So she gets on the couch, I get on, and we hold each other's hands. And I look at her and go. <laughs> and she looks at me. And we like two little birdies. How many has ever seen the... Uh, only one more hour left. <clears throat> if you look at nature and you see a bird nest and you'll see a big bird, one of the, one, there's two birds in the nest, one's sort of small, and the big bird, you know what the big bird will do? Peck the other one to death and push him out of the nest. He falls down in the water and his outer gate goes... How many have ever seen that? It's called the pecking syndrome. 
And that way you see the big bird, the big bird gets all the goodies. When the mama comes and, and those juicy worms and juicy grasshoppers, you know, that big bird gets all the food and the little one's already going and, and eating himself. That's, that's all some people know about marriage. If I peck him enough, he'll leave. If I peck her enough, she'll leave. Called the pecking syndrome. I've seen it in relationships, in relationships. I'm going to say something. You can cut me off if you want to, but I still love you. Take your finger and put it in your pocket and leave it there. Don't ever peck your mate. You'll ruin your marriage. You'll ruin the relationship. And that's one reason I really believe that, that my wife and me have such a great relationship. Because the last time she pointed her finger at me, I broke it. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, really, it's the other way around. <laughs> she doesn't, she doesn't, she doesn't see my faults. Thank you, darling, because I'd have been dead a long time ago. And that's what the Lord does. He looks beyond our faults. He sees our needs, and he loves us unconditionally. And he came to this earth to seek out those that are lost and to save and to show you what really life is all about. We have a loving Heavenly Father. And Christ died on that cross. He didn't do it for Himself. He did it for us. This is the last scripture. It's Hebrews 13. Turn to Hebrews 13. We'll quit on this. I know you're getting hungry. Powerful verse of scripture. Let's start with verse 20, if you don't mind. Um, 13, chapter 13, uh, verse 20 and 21. Now, remember this. When we read this, May the God of peace, who is the author and the giver of peace, who brought again from among the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood that seals, ratifies, the everlasting agreement, covenant, and testimony. Now remember the God of peace. Remember that. May the God of peace strengthen, complete, perfect, and make you what you are to be. Who's going to make you what you are to be? God. And equip you with everything good that you may carry out His will while He Himself works in you and accomplishes that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ the Messiah, to whom be the glory forever and ever to the ages of ages to come. Amen. Amen. Now here's where we've all made our mistake. We're going to change ourselves, or we're going to change our kids, or we're going to change our mate. You ain't going to do it. May the God of peace, your faith goes into God that he is strengthening, perfecting, and making us everything we are to be. How many sees the picture? Write those scriptures down. Get those scriptures in there. And you say, Lord, you said you're working in me, and you're strengthening me, you're perfecting me, and you are making me what I ought to be by your power, by your strength. And Lord, all I can do is give you praise and glory. And this is called the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. Get the Word of God in you, and God will perform that Word that's in you. Watch over it and bring it forth. I'll guarantee you, a year from now, you'll be the most loving person in the world. You can love the unlovely. You'll even love yourself. 
Because God will do the work inside of you by His power and by His strength. Let's pray. Lord, we thank You that we...